Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. And I'm Mark Unger, and our sponsors on the program today, Al Dietrich Oldsmobile, where the runway ends in Waterford, the deals begin. Uncle Al has declared war on high prices. TCOM Pagers, Fred Wetzel and the gang will take care of you if you need a pager. Sports Fans Journal. Third year, just completed the third year of Sports Fans Journal. Getting bigger and better. 84 page, four color magazine. We've added John Sally to the staff, and I think that'll add a little something new to the magazine. And uh, we still have all our celebrity writers, and all you have to do to subscribe is dial this number 24 hours a day for information, 751-1818. Top Hat, the best little burger in town where you can find Bob Page when he's in town. With his jockstrap. Cattleman's right Meat Center, David Roth and the people there will take care of him <laughs> with two locations, one in beautiful downtown Hamtramck, the <laughs> other in the heart of the Hamtramck. Eastern like Market. That? The Sting, the hot nightclub on James Cousins at Greenfield. Pass, Pro-Am Sports Systems, and Binary Computers, John Waters and the people, Woodward at 12 Mile. And beautiful Don, Don Hamtramck. Uh, <laughs> I guess he's trying to go back to the 40s and the 50s when Hamtramck was beautiful. I was there uh, when they had the Pope. It was beautiful. Well, with the Pope there, I guess so. <laughs> they better make it beautiful. Hey, I was there when they had the president there. Wait, let's introduce our guest. Was it beautiful guest. then? It was let's lovely. Let's introduce I, our guest. You know, I'd never been there. I think, I think it's knocked unfairly. Detroit by people News like you, sports writer Jerry Green. <laughs> Jerry, welcome to the show. Hi, me. it's good to be back again. Thanks for That's coming. That's right. Out. He was just it's nice to see you. Welcome, rookie. Thank you very much. I'm having my. Uh, I'm doing my best, as they say. Well, Jerry, we uh, anymore. Give it a How's shot. everything going with you? You were throwing lawsuits out and everything else lately. There is a lawsuit still is. Uh, hanging. I'm eager to get into court with these people. When, well, you know how courts are. You might not. You might be 75 years old. It might be two years from now when you're 75. No. I <laughs> But before you get into that's what how the whole thing's work. about, but uh, it'll take a while, sure. Let's talk about it a little bit. I'm Jerry, prepared to I'm, wait. I'm not sure everybody knows exactly the situation. Why don't you give us a little background on it? <laughs> well, it was well, it was just about 11 and a half months ago that I got canned as a columnist after doing it for 15 years, and I don't think it was justified, and I think it was basically an act of age discrimination. So I am, I've sued them. On those grounds, I, I couldn't understand why they did it. Jerry Green has been one of the best writers in town, and uh, has done it for a long time. And, and for them to do that so suddenly, you're I, just repeating what he said. But I we think they're that. hurting themselves. I really do. I think they've hurt themselves since doing that. They, they, well, why do you think you, you, you mentioned the age discrimination? You're a controversial columnist, like certain other people, like myself, are controversial on television. We tell people to go stick it, you know, you know where, and all that stuff, and. Although some people like that, a lot of people can't stand the fact that you don't tell the hometown side of things and you don't rub it up being a PR man for the home team, things like that. Did that have anything to do with it, Jerry? It might have. I think Joe Falls mentioned that on uh, this show a while ago. And the fact that you were just too tough, Negative. Too negative. Negative. I mean, uh, that's what a columnist is supposed to do. What, express what, an opinion. A columnist is supposed to express an opinion. And when you take that opinion away from him and deprive the people of that voice, that in itself is censorship. That's right. And for a newspaper to be exercising censorship when it should be fighting against it, to me, is repugnant. And Jerry also, the part of the negatives was the Detroit Lions. <laughs> and you well, covered it from the sporting news for many years, and you, you, you were on the, on the beat with the Lions and all that stuff. How can you be positive with such a horse manure organization? Exactly. Football team. You know, I like the owner. The general manager has been the problem there since uh, 1966, and I've written it, and uh, it's true, and it's probably still true. There. You now that I probably mean, had where is to Barry it. Sanders? Right. It's the same stuff. They did, couldn't sign Billy Sims. They couldn't sign Chuck Long, and it hurt them. Yeah, sure did. Now, Jerry, another thing: the fact that uh, you're you're talking about that. You know, when, when Bob Page, who used to co-host this show, was on WJR. Uh, Amply replaced. And thank you very but, much. But, but let's face it, he, he blasted Russ Thomas and they fired him. Do the teams own the stations and do the teams have anything? Do, do the Lions and, and Tigers and other teams own WJR? Well, I saw an item in... They call the shots? I saw an item in one of the Sunday papers in which J.P. McCarthy was unhappy, perhaps angry, because he could not have Wayne Fonts on there because Wayne Fonts is tied up with WWJ, the new broadcasting uh, partner of the Lions, mm -hmm. to take a head coach of a football team, a major sports news source, and, and deny a station the privilege or the right to talk to this man is, to my mind, it's illegal. I'll repeat the word repugnant. 
I think it's wrong, obviously. Yeah, obviously. You know, and I, I think it's going to have to be corrected, but that, that again is a, it's a matter of censorship and ethics. Do the teams call the shots at these stations? Of course they do. In, in uh, some respects. I, would like I, 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 I don't think you've got to qualify that. You degree. have to qualify. The Lions have always been very forceful in their negotiations with WJR and WWJ. They put restrictions on. They've kicked people off. They have the final say in broadcasters. I think the Tigers have the same right, but the Tigers have a, have a great deal more quality class. Class. Good That's Lions. the key word. Jerry. Class. Jim Burke was fired at WWJ. Did the Lions, in your mind, cause that by bringing in Mark Champion as their man? Uh, indirectly. I understand that Jim Burke had the opportunity to work weekends there. Well, work weekends? There's, no, there's nothing to weekends. You know, the paper Most boy. of the sports uh, occur Yeah, but on not on radio okay, for the weekends, fine. Jerry. Not fine, okay, so he chose to leave. But uh, I don't think the Lions selected Mark Champion because they liked the name. It was so foreign to them, Champion. Yeah, yeah, you like that. So I think this does have a lot of draw on that. I mean, <laughs> that's trying to be funny, but the but the Lions <laughs> indirectly caused that. But I I think it was more CBS, which now owns uh, uh, WWJ, and I think and it was WWJ, more than the station than the Lions. I can't blame them for that. If I may oh. interrupt, WWJ has a habit of going outside the Detroit market to bring people. Okay, in. except that you say it's play-by-play -play announcer, but part of the I'll deal was that too. Uh, 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 part of the deal <laughs> was hold on, just a minute. Let me just finish this. Dale Conquest we're went talking. From we're having a conversation. Dale Conquest switched stations within Detroit. Dale, yes, he did. You're right. Okay, okay but what I'm trying That's to say to you was I mean. part of the deal to to get champion in in Detroit, where he would do the sports too on that station. I would say that was part of the deal. And the Lions too, got Jim Burke fired, more or less. Well, but Ron, I mean, Indirect. you bring in a guy I mean, not, not just to do football, you bring him in to do the other Lions things. The Lions brought him in, is what I'm trying to tell you. But the Lions have tried to control the media. Yes, they tried to control me, and I fought them and battled with them and had all sorts of tangles with them. Then ending the question, could that be one another one of the reasons you're fired? Or you are demoted, not fired? That's stretching it a little I, bit. Well, we're at the, I don't let's know. ask you. I, I, I would not want to say the Lions went to the Detroit News and said, Fire, uh, can this guy. Russ Thomas? Not, a lot at, of not at this time. No, I'm sure they did it at one time, but not, not then. I'll tell you something interesting about the Lions. No, the, the, the news had enough uh, on its mind to do it. No, the news did not have any ammunition. Well, I was in ammunition. <laughs> the news did not have any ammunition to demote me. They just, uh, you know, they, they just, one man thought he should do it, and he did it, and I think he did it illegally, and, you know, he's the defendant now in the lawsuit. Are they changing the way columnists are in Detroit? They don't want the controversy anymore here? Or what, what's going on, Jerry? Well, I don't think the news wants it as much because uh, Gannett is known as a good news organization, even though Al Newharth, I understand, wrote a very interesting columnist about bring back young unmarried women to work on airplanes <laughs> because the, the, uh, the service people were getting too old for his tastes. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest on Sports View today is Detroit News sports writer Jerry Green, and we'll be back with more from Jerry after this. a new generation of Oldsmobiles. At Al Dietrich Olds GMC Trucks. Choose from a great selection of Oldsmobiles. Including Cutlass Supreme and the restyled Cutlass Sia. Or hundreds of GMC trucks in stock. Complete with an Uncle Al price that can't be beat. For sales or service. Let Uncle Al come through for you. This is the new generation of Oldsmobiles. East of the Pontiac Airport. On M59 in Waterford. If you're a sports fan, you should be reading this Sports Fans Journal, home of the celebrity columnists. Just $15 a year to subscribe. Our writers, Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Denny McLean, Jim Northrup, Don Cherry, Dick Vitale, George Allen, Bob Feller, Larry King, and a whole lot more. Sports Fans Journal, a must for all sports fans living in Michigan or anywhere in the U.S. Call our 24-hour hotline at 751-1818. Sports Fans Journal is sold at newsstands, bookstores, and Tiger Stadium souvenir stands. Call now, 751-1818. If you travel across Michigan but still need to be in touch, you need a personal pocket pager from TCOM Paging. 
TCOM is Michigan's only paging service with true wide area state coverage service. And with TCOM, a local phone call is all it takes to beep you anywhere. TCOM offers quality pagers by Motorola, like the Motorola Sensa, sleek and elegant. It even displays your paging message. So when you travel, stay in touch with a pocket pager from TCOM from just $12.95 a month. Find out more. Call TCOM today. We're back on Sports View with Detroit News sports writer, ex-columnist Jerry Green. And Jerry, <laughs> is, is the tie changing <laughs> columnist-wise where, where maybe they're going after like Mitch Album, the cute writers, people that are not necessarily sports experts, in which Mitch Album is not really. But he, I mean, he's an excellent writer, but a little cute and not enough controversy. Now, I think columns yeah. should be controversial, Jerry. Well, first of all, he's very bright and very Oh, very clever, good. Very, and he's very good and he, he's industrious. Yeah, I think that I think they're going for the more uh, cutesy stuff. I think Mount Mike Downey actually introduced that to the Detroit market, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a very formidable rival. But Jerry, aren't you seeing that just as much in television and radio, and as well as print? Yeah, what a great point that is, because I think the newspapers are trying to ape television. Right. They're trying to be uh, the anchor man and you know? you know and all that <laughs> all that stuff. You, you know and where the focus is on the writer rather than the event, where the focus is on the news. And I think newspapers are wrong in doing that. I think TV is th wrong in doing that. Well, I think TV is wrong in doing it too, but TV is an entertainment medium first and then a news medium second. We are a news medium first and we're supposed to entertain and be lively, but we're not supposed to be showbiz. Yeah. And uh, that's the difference. And, and, and Downey is showbiz. Well, he sure. was fine. And album he is quit. showbiz. Well, but Downey, Downey went to Hollywood from here. <laughs> yeah, well, that's so, right. Didn't he? And he used to be a movie reviewer. Speaking of television, of course, Scott Wally's leaving uh, Channel 4. So I understand he's yeah. going to Boston to replace Don Shane, <laughs> which is... <laughs> what a rotten is that business the, that is. Well, is that the Detroit, Boston, I was going to say Seattle? it's a lousy trade, but... <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, Scott Wally? Well, what do you well mean? Uh, Wally goes to Boston and Shane comes here. Bad deal, <laughs> but, but for humor. Humor. Ron, it's humor. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> humor. Yeah, I, hey, I I have a sense of humor. You do. You Very know, subtle, this. though. That's one of the things that, that yeah, I've always well, liked about you. You, you have know, to I read beneath your stuff a, a well, lot. Well, usually times. it's beneath me because I'm sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, That's, you make the reader have to have a, a higher level of understanding. Well, I, at times. No, I think a reader. This time, that's I think a reader should think. I think he wants to think. Some of them can't. Yeah, but uh, I think most of the sports fans in this town are sophisticated enough and know enough about the sports teams, the people, to be given a point of view and say, gee, he's right, or boy, is he full of baloney, I'm going to write him a nasty letter. Did you get a lot of nasty letters? I did. I did. Uh, now you're not in a position to. Well, I get a, an occasional one, but uh, <laughs> you know, they're, they're very cautious with, with the way I write nowadays because... Uh, if I have an opinion, they strike it out. That's commentary. You can't do that. Doesn't that just kill you when you submit a story and they're just knocking things out? Well, you know, I had a story the other day in which, uh, which was rewritten, and they put my byline on it, and I'm, I'm very angry that my byline exists on a story that I, in fact, did not write because it was rewritten. And the, the man who rewrote the story should have his byline as well, far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that, that's, a, that, that's an interesting point because he has compliments of some of these newspapers here. And I've said that about the Detroit News before. I think some of their people just have no clue what's going on. And they shouldn't even be in those yeah. positions. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let's get some of your opinion, some of your comment. On okay, the, my opinions are, have been well preserved. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, on, now, on now the tiger situation this year, and will they be able to return to the kind of decent team that they were the past couple of years? Yes, because uh, nowadays teams are able to go from last place to first in a year. Uh, I don't think the Orioles are going to hold on, but uh, they've been able to do it, make it an interesting summer there. And I think the Tigers start with a better nucleus because they have uh, the core of Whitaker and Trammell in there, and they're signed for the future, so there's no worry there. And LaJoy has refused to trade those two guys. Well, I would hope fix. he would refuse to trade them. Bill LaJoy oh, a lot is of a very smart... A people in town want him to. Well, Ron Whitaker. wants to trade Lou Whitaker. I don't want to trade it. I don't want to trade either one of those two guys. I think LaJoy is a smart man. Yes, he is. A terrific baseball man who's had his hands tied. I, you know, it wasn't 
Bill LaJoy who cost the Tigers, Kirk Gibson and uh, Lance Parrish, it was the policies put into effect by upper management, yep. higher management. Well, I don't know on the, on, on the Lance Parish because he, he signed for less money elsewhere. He made a fool out of himself. Yes, there. but the Lions and La uh, the Lions. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> there you, you go. Still got That's those what lines on your spread it around. The, the, the Tigers had treated him so disrespectfully over a year that they made up his mind that he was going to leave. Well, you know, the Lance admitted it was a mistake. I don't think. I think well, the Tigers it was have a mistake, mistake but, too but, much it, on that but a one. year before that, he was complaining about uh, why can't we sit down and talk about contract? Yeah. You know, and he didn't understand that. And Lance was a guy who wore his heart on his sleeve, and uh, he loved the Tigers and he loved Detroit. He should have come back then. He might have even loved the Lions. He should have come back, sure. But uh, again, he got uh, his agent. I think. Uh, Tom Rich uh, let him away, too. I think he's incompetent. I think most agents are incompetent. Our guest on the show is sports writer totally Jerry Green from the Detroit News, and we'll be back to close out with Jerry after this. I wish I had him. Not too many years ago, as a defensive back with the Pittsburgh Steelers, after my playing career at the University of Michigan had ended. Now I'm proud to be co-owner of the Sting, Detroit's most dynamic nightclub. We've got continuous live DJs, continuous videos, and live entertainment every weekend. But you don't have to disco. The Sting is also a great after work place to meet other professional people who frequent our lounge. So stop in and see us at the Sting. We're in the old Playboy Club, the lodge at Greenfield, with plenty of lighted, secured parking. Where's the meat? It's right here at Cattleman's Meat Center where you can buy fresh, lean, top quality beef, pork, veal, poultry, even fish. Packing house style, save up to 40%, quality guaranteed. Where's the meat? Come inside our 3,500 square foot cooler for everyday low prices like T-Bones and Porterhouse, just $2.29 a pound. Cattleman's Meat Center, Eastern Market Area, and Hamtramck. No limit, save up to 40%. You said it, honey. We're back on Sports View to Detroit News sports writer Jerry Green. And we're not closing out. No. We have another segment you after You just screwed this. up. My That's mistake. Because you're stealing okay, my time. Okay, Jerry, uh, sports writing in general over the years, you've been writing now for, for the Detroit More News. More than 25 years. I think years. that when Ty Cobb was playing, you had a byline, didn't you? <laughs> no, that was uh, my grandfather, Sam. <laughs> oh, that's Sam, yes. Who was not really my grandfather. No. Incidentally. Well, you're not related to Sam, were you? No. no. I Spelled nor different, too, isn't it? Yeah, he, they added an E on but Green, he had, no, it been was a great name in uh, right. Yeah, well, yes, uh, a real name. Does it people get you mixed up? Do people get you? Mixed I up the still same? get asked that. Yes, or say, hey, I knew your father, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Do <laughs> Doc actually was my first sports editor at the news. Yeah, and he was a good one. Doc was good. Yeah, the bottle yeah. came about a little bit on that, but both well, he, <laughs> you know, he he had his problems. Yeah, uh, but an excellent writer. Good. Who was the biggest influence in your career to become a sports writer? To become a sports writer? Well, okay, a guy named Warren Pfaff. Definitely. You never fun. heard of him. No. He was the first guy I met who could throw a curveball, and he struck me out four times. Were you a ball player? Oh, well, everybody wanted to be a ball player, but right. when this guy came up with a curveball and struck me out four Jerry, times, was that I little said, league? Well, well, it was a little beyond little league. <laughs> yeah. I was in high school. High school. And I struck out four times. I said, well, uh, <laughs> maybe you ought to start... Uh, Touching reality. What fella. year was that, Jerry? I was about 16. Yeah, but that, that was about 19. Say 44. 44. Woo. I was touching reality, okay? Anyway, uh, so the sports writing was the next best thing because I love sports and I love newspapers, and I still do. Where did you grow At up, Jerry? Long Island. And this was bit, in Long uh, Island? A little bit east of Joe Falls. And, and but you, you, came, <laughs> you came about the same way Joe Falls did, didn't you, to Detroit? Weren't you Associated Press? Uh, Editor. Well, there's a look of pain on my face. So I can <laughs> see the monitor. See, we don't have monitors when we, we when write. I, I came with Associated Press, except Joe worked in New York uh, before he came here and, 
and I did not. You I came right to Detroit, your first job? Uh, first job out of the service, well, second job out of the service, first job out here. I, I worked for a paper in New York before I came here. And once you started writing, who was uh, someone you took after or who influenced you writing? Well, I'd say Doc Green to a great degree. I, I thought Red Smith was absolutely fantastic, and I thought Jimmy Cannon was probably the best sports writer in the country, probably the best who ever lived in my mind. Uh, Jimmy Cannon, who wrote for the New York Journal American and New York Post, and you know he was crusty and he, he had a style that was something like Ernest Hemingway's, a style that I happen to like very much. Uh, and Red Smith, both the, both men I knew fairly well. They were somewhat older than I was, and and I read an awful lot of what they wrote. And you know, I said, "Gee, that's good." So I guess uh, I somewhat endeavored to uh, to uh, be like them. Jerry, you the, the fact that you're you're writing and you're doing something you want to do. You know, most people out there, well, I want to do the same thing. It's not that easy. What you just said. Now, to get no. involved and be a sports writer, you no. might have to write the entertainment. You might have to sweep out the Johns and do everything else until you become that. Hey, I started as a copy boy for twenty nine dollars a week, lugging cups of coffee for people. <laughs> well, look at me. I'm doing the show with Ron Cameron just to get a break into TV. So well, you know, there's a lot of levels. Yeah, kiss the ground, too. Know, I, I, <laughs> oh, don't, I don't know whether you're getting more than 29 bucks a week, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm you know, losing the, money the, on the show so far. <laughs> the rest of it, I, you know, I don't know whether you really want to stand that. I don't think yeah. somebody has to uh, demean himself to that that regard to work with him. I know, but it no, depends okay. on... Hey, I, I, look, he's made a success of this thing. Depends on how bad you want something, I guess. Well, it depends on how bad you want something. Plus, if you want to pay plus, the price. Plus the fact, I'll put it this way, you'll probably wind up in New York because look what he did to make Bob Page. <laughs> Absolutely. I saved Bob Page. I got him right out of the gutter. <laughs> I got him from the bar, from the gutter to the bar to here. Uh, with of course, the stop, he still goes to the bar. With, with a stop at Top Hat along yeah, the way. Yeah, with a stop at Top Hat with a drop <laughs> strap along the way. Uh, Do you feel, Jerry, though, that overall sports writing has got better or worse in the last eight, 30 years? Well, there's no Jimmy Cannon right now, and there's no Red Smith right now. I think, as you say, it's gotten cuter. Like I think Jim Murray. I think Jim Mur but Jim Murray was able to do it and do it every day. Jim Murray still is able to do it and do it every day. Has he day. still got his eyesight, or is he? Is he? Uh, yeah, his eyes have come back to a degree. He, he can see, and he can think, and he can write. He's brilliant. Uh, a guy like Frank DeFord has taken sports writing and made it into an exquisite craft. He's terrific. He, I'm sorry he left Sports Illustrated. He's going to publish a national daily sports newspaper or be editor of that paper. Good luck. If it ever comes out. Well, you know, I've you done and, well, but you it, and but he that's are in the same yeah. kind of uh, business there, concentrating on sports only. I want to give you something to think about, and we're going to take a break and come back. How do you characterize yourself as a sports writer in, in today's uh, market of, of writing, as it were? We're going to talk with Jerry Green and get an answer to that question <laughs> when we come back to close out after this. This time we're closing out. Yeah. Brian? So, listen, you wanna get high? I got some great stuff. No thanks, Mike. That junk's bad news. Smart kid. He doesn't need that stuff. Nobody does. I'm McGruff, the crime dog. Now, watch these kids. I'm bored. Why don't we get wasted? Why don't you get real? I've got a better idea. Why don't you get lost? See that? It's happening everywhere. So, if anyone ever wants to turn you on, just turn them off. It's a great way to help take a bite out of crime. Travel. Fastball, fly ball, deep to left field. It is gone! A two-run homer! Tiger Flair! Whitaker. A high hopper up the middle. Whitaker back of the bag. Here's a throw! Got him! What a play by Lou Whitaker! One Morris. One out to George Brett. He got him on strike. Morris threw it right past George Brett. His 10th strikeout of the night. 
Binary Computers is celebrating their ninth anniversary, and how they've become one of Detroit's top independent computer dealers is really simple. A great selection of brand name computer products, outstanding service, and highly knowledgeable trained consultants who make things understandable in plain English. Binary now has facsimile machines and telephone systems, so stop in for special anniversary savings at Binary Computers, Metro Detroit's business computer center, Woodward at 12 Mile, Berkeley. Remember, if you haven't got a computer, you'd better get one before your competitor does. What do these women have in common? They were all Girl Scouts. Girl Scouting showed them that they could do or be anything. An ambassador to the United Nations or an Olympic champion. Girl Scouting inspires girls to dream big and prepares them to meet the challenges of a demanding adult world. Your daughter should be a Girl Scout. She'll be in very good company. And she'll get the right start. We're back closing it out with Detroit News sports writer Jerry Green. And uh, like Mark asked, how do you characterize yourself as a writer? Well, I thought I was an excellent columnist. A lot of people agreed with me. I, I at one time, just a couple of years ago, had the uh, surveyed out with the largest readership of any Detroit News sports columnist, so I, you know, I think that is testament to my ability. Uh, I don't want, really want to brag. I'd rather talk about my philosophies, and that uh, if I was negative, it was because I always believe that a columnist should uh, his tone should reflect the performances of the teams on the field, and I don't see how you could write an awful lot positive about the Tigers this year. I don't see how you, anybody could write positively about the Lions for the last 25 years. And one thing, and not in the Red to Wings, up, but what do you think of Wayne Fonce's contract extension? I thought that was absurd. Well, I think it's very nice that uh, <laughs> if he coaches a game, he'll probably get a 10-year contract. <laughs> yeah. But Bill, Bill Ford is that way. Bill Ford is a very nice, decent man. Uh, he just happened to guy, have a bad guy as a GM. It has that, its fault. I think that's his fault. We got away from the question, but let's talk about this. I, you know, I, I think Ford uh, wants to win so much he he'll go out there waving pennants, and he then when he doesn't win, he gets so angry that you know he's fired a lot of coaches. Is it and true it's a very that he pulled uh, Bill Ford out of the drunk tank, Rustano? Of course, it's true. Well, the, not asking you. You don't know that. You I do know. Go ahead. Let Jerry, Jerry answer. I could not totally verify that. Uh, it has been rumored. Uh, not that he, you know, the way you said it, uh, I don't think that's the case, but I think he, I think he... he stopped a potential big problem. I think he sat with Bill and, you know, watched him and guarded over him. And I think protected him. Bill's a very loyal person. Asked him to do that and said, as long as you watch out well, for my son, you'll have a job. That is the way the story goes, yes. But... Uh, you know, but that's a long time ago, and I think Bill Ford has uh, handled whatever problem he might have with great strength, because it takes great strength for people like that to uh, to control a lot. Bob okay. Welsh is another who was able to do it, and Bobby Probert has not yet learned how. Okay. He's not alone. Jerry Green, thank you very much for coming on the show. We had a great time. Our sponsors today, Al Dietrich Oldsmobile, Sports Fans Journal, TCOM Pagers, Top Hat, The Sting, Cattleman's Meat Center, and uh, pass and binary computers. Everybody, thanks for watching. Catch me on WJZZ mornings and afternoons and Ron Cameron on WCAR. See you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.